Ladies and gentlemen, we have the winner for Adapted Screenplay for Call Me By Your Name, Mr. James Ivory. I will start in the back with 104 and then go to 46. 104, they're 46. Mr. Ivory, we just need you to step up to the microphone. Congratulations, Mr. Ivory. Who's in the back. Over here. Yeah. Congratulations on not only being the oldest uh, Oscar male winner, but also the, win uh, the winner, the oldest winner overall in Academy's history. So how does it feel? Mr. Ivory, can we have you move to the microphone? Perfect. Well, I, I, I imagine how it would feel. I mean, it just has been 90, 90 years for anything that you would do is extraordinary. But to be here, uh, having won the Oscar at that age, just seems as like a, a hiccup in nature, possibly, <laughs> something like that. Um, but it feels great, and it, it certainly feels, it feels good to be holding on to that Oscar. It's my Oscar for the first time. Uh, I've been nominated before, but never won. Uh, I once had to receive an Oscar for Ruth Javala, and I walked around with hers, but it was not mine. So it's a very good feeling, and I'm glad it was, particularly I'm glad that it was uh, an Oscar for writing. Uh, I'm not exactly new to that. I mean, I've worked on many of our film scripts. I've co-written uh, scripts before, films of ours that were produced, but I've never written one from, you know, right from the first uh, lines uh, up to the end, and seen it produced. And we're going to go to 46, which is just to the right in the back, Mr. Ivory. 46? Hello. Okay. Over here. Hi. You, you say thank you to Luca Guadagnino, and I'm wondering, uh, what was in that book that made you feel like you wanted to adapt uh, this particular book, and what was it like working with Luca Guadagnino? Well, the first interest in, uh, for me was the fact that the film was going to be made in Italy, because Italy is a country that I love, and as you know, I made a room with a view there, and I've also made, worked in other films there. I, I love the idea of going to Italy and making a film. And um, so and then the story naturally has a, a good, good amount of um, personal relevance for me. And um, so that was, that was interesting, uh, of course. Um, but it just generally was a project that I liked, and I liked the people that, that were involved in it. Um, and as for Luca, I never, I never was around on the set while he was working uh, <clears throat> because I, I stayed in New York while they shot. But we had many, many meetings about what we were going to do, or what I wanted to do in many cases. I mean, there were certain thing, big, big things I wanted to do with the novel. I wanted to cut off the ending of it and, and drop a chunk of it later on and all this sort of thing. So he was always very agreeable and, and reasonable about what I wanted to do, and he had some good ideas of his own. And uh, th th those have come into the script. So uh, it, it was, you know, it was good working with him. And, and good being in Crema, where he lives, in that part of Italy, which I don't know too well. It's uh, fairly near Milan. We're going to 37, and then we'll come down to 227, mm -hmm. which will wrap it up. Yeah. Um, this is obviously such a um, specific um, LGBTQ story, but there's a sort of universality to it, too. I think everyone can kind of see themselves in it a little bit. And uh, what do you think makes the love story so universal? And, and how do you think everyone is able to connect to it so powerfully? Well, <clears throat> I think it's, it's the whole idea of if a, a first love, one's, one's first strong love, which may, go, may have gone badly, it has gone badly for many people, but you survive and you go on to other loves, hopefully. Um, I, I think that's what's it's a universal situation. First, first love and how we, how we feel about it, whether it's made us unhappy or joyous, whatever, and that is universal, I think, just in, and that is subject matter that everyone, everywhere can, uh, you know, identify with. And we're going to wrap up right here with 227. Hi, Jeannie Wolf from Saturday Evening Post. You know, people keep talking about your age. Was it fun <laughs> to write from that young man's first love point of view. It's a while since you had first love. So was it exciting? Was it, was it easy? Was it thrilling to, to write, to you know, create well, I, I, that I, it, atmosphere? Yeah, I think that's why I'm here. I think it was, in fact, a re rejuvenating experience somehow. It wouldn't be like 
there are other kinds of books you might adapt. Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be like that. I think one, in a sense, uh, emotionally and in, in, in your memories, you do relive your own your own life at that time, late teenage. I I think about it. All, I still think about it all the time. I don't have to be writing a script to, yes. to think about when I was a teenager. You captured it. Great. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Mr. Ivory. Congratulations. Thank you.